Okay, so this is something that I actually did like Friday before coming. And I basically implemented a way to obtain data from a Nexus device through gRPC and put it into Kafka. So basically telemetry, as you probably already know, is just a way to stream data directly from the devices instead of requesting it every five minutes or something like SNMP. And gRPC is just at the Google Remote Procedure Call implementation based on HTTP2 uh, that use the same um, protocol buffer technology to define a dot proto not only for the classes or messages but also for the services that gRPC is going to use and it has a compiler that basically generate some abstract classes you have to implement for the actual services you are going to need. So in case of Cisco they support for telemetry, UDP, HTTP, and gRPC, and they can encode the actual data either on Protobuf or JSON. And you can export data uh, using the data man management engine or uh, the NX API, but they recommend to be careful with NX API, which is pretty much like the show commands, because that's CPU intensive. So it can be like expensive unless it is quickly to do so. The main problem with a UDP in the way the Nexus implements it is that each packet is going to be completely independent of each other. So whatever you put on each UDP packet, it should fit the packet. So there's no way to like send a big chunk of data at the same time and the switch is not going to split it for you. So it's like I have to be like very detailed, as you can see below. I'm going to like send in small packets to make sure that they are going to fit UDP. And if you find something that is a little bit larger but fits in UDP, you have to be careful with MTU on your other devices. So just to give you an idea, it's like on my small test that I have a virtual Nexus on GNS3, and it has like 64 virtual ports. The GBP load, if I want to send the old DME tree for system interfaces, has 700K. So of course, I cannot send that through UDP. And that's just 64. The thing is, that's a Nexus. So that's going to be a lot more than 64 interfaces. So I can't even imagine how much data that package is going to have. And with gRPC, uh, the, the Nexus can handle like megabytes per transaction. So with gRPC, because I can just send everything on the same uh, transaction, I can just define, as you can see below, the system interface unbounded. That means everything be inside that tree. That's a lot of information besides just interface statistics. And that, of course, simplifies uh, the configuration on the switch because on the other way, the configuration is going to be really huge. And then the other thing is like uh, Cisco has chosen like a very, very, very generic definitions, not only for the GBP data, but also for the gRPC service to like because they can send like a lot of things. And even if they are not implementing all the ways right now, uh, it's a little bit complicated in terms of especially understand what's inside the uh, telemetry message data they generate, but it is doable. So on that link is where they define the dot proto files. So the Nexus has a bidirectional streaming service. So in gRPC, you can have like a unary service, like just one uh, request, one response. You can do server streaming, client streaming, or bidirectional thanks to HTTP2. So if, even if this is bidirectional definition, it's actually doing just client streaming because the server streaming is not uh, implemented on the Nexus like on the Cisco XR devices has the other part. So that simplifies the, imp the implementation a little bit. So the main challenge that I have is actually as a standalone, it works pretty well. I mean, it's really 
easy to use and to work with, at least with uh, Java. And actually, it hides all the internal of the communication. It's literally like calling a method. It's that easy. Unfortunately, the OS, uh, the OSGI bundles for our gRPC doesn't exist. And uh, if you try to do it yourself, you have to be careful because the jars of gRPC itself have conflict between each other when you expose package and that kind of thing and make it really hard to have it in OSGI. So what I did is just working as a standalone application. And actually, you, we can recall it later, but that's the resume of the problems to have all the conflicts figured out, at least uh, not only within a standalone graph, but also OpenMS. So for OpenMS, uh, as I don't, I cannot have it working within it, I just modify the original uh, package to instead of sending the raw package from telemetry from the Nexus, I just wrap it in the same telemetry package Minion generates. So I am basically bypassing Minion, and in terms of OpenMS, it will think it is receiving data from a Minion. So for demo, I of course have my GNS3 lab running the Nexus and, uh, and a small VM with a Minion and my app, and that's sending everything to my AWS lab, which I'm going to show you right now. So let me show you what I have on that VM right now. So here I have my app running. So it is connected to the same Kafka cluster that the Minion is connected and is receiving data directly through the Nexus. And I'm pretty much sending two packets, a small one and the one with all the interfaces. And you can see that it's been constantly sending for a while. And I'm sending, as I said, just the full system interfaces through gRPC using Google Protobuf. So because OpenMS doesn't need any change because it will believe Minion is actually sending the data. If I look at the at the page for that Nexus, you will be able to see that I'm indeed receiving data for the all 64 interfaces that is not possible with GDP. And the other thing that I wanted to show here is that if we go to the Minion, that's the Minion configuration. I have nothing running, or not the listeners that I have here are for flows, not for receiving any kind of data uh, from the switch. So it works pretty well, but unfortunately, uh, I still have to figure out how to certify the dependencies to put it inside OpenMS. And uh, I mean, it works pretty well if it wasn't for that. But uh, the cool thing is like, uh, it's really, really not that hard. And actually, it just requires two things. So of course, the one that actually triggers the server. And the actual code is, uh, what is it? OK, here it is. I would just create a wrapper. But build server is just uh, you provide an ad an address, and then it just you pass your implementation, and uh, that's pretty much it. All the all the rest is just information I pass to the actual implementation, and the actual implementation is going to basically implement this abstract class. That class comes from the gRPC generator. So that's something generated for you, depending on the proto definition. And because this is a very simple client side telemetry, I just I just need to like receive the package, and I don't have to tell anything to the server because it's not necessary. And what I'm doing with the message is just printing something on the log and then sending it to Kafka. And here is when I wrap the information with the minion information to be able to send it, and that's. 
pretty much it. So, well, that's pretty much it. Thank you. Yeah, go ahead, David. Um, what's the license of the generated code? Uh, GRPC and Protobuf are, I think, are Apache license. <laughs> No, no. Code generator is not a human. It can't hold copyright. Exactly. Yeah, because basically what you know when you are going to work with uh, with any protobuf or gRPC data is just this. So, so, and so the protobufs don't have licenses on them. Yes, yeah, so you, you get that. You, then you have the code generator, and depending on your language, you generate your core for their language, and that's pretty much it. For the protobuf, I think they are, don't have any dependencies, but the, the gRPC data depends on protobuf. So at runtime, you need the protobuf library. So it looks very simple here, but actually work with that is not that easy. <laughs> There's a lot of interest at uh, the network operator group level yeah. Um, when I was in New, New uh, Zealand, I got um, in a discussion with a Cisco rep, and she was bad mouthing SNMP. <laughs> yeah. And I said, You put me in the unfortunate position of defending SNMP because they still do SNMP at the CPU. Exactly. And all of this gRPC stuff is being done with application specific ICs at the card level. Exactly. Of course, it's, it's hella fast, you know, and um, the ability to support this, even if we're just emulating a minion, is great. Exactly. So you, yeah, I think it's, uh, it's really cool. How do you figure all this GRPC stuff out? Have you put any thought into um, how we handle this in the minion in the case where there are two minions at a location? That's one of the challenges I, I had when I was looking at this originally. Is that minions only run in pairs, right? So then if you have one, you will have to uh, probably put like a load balancer in front of it because of course it's minion is going to start start its own um service but this you saw the nexus configuration you have to point to a specific ip unless you point it to something that is like an, a load balancer or something like that because you start actually like a, a listener it's pretty much like the udp udp is going to start a listener but it's you have multiple minion the device can still have where which one you know. So is it that the, the device will initiate the connection to your e server? Yes. Not the other way around? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the the Nexus is running to is going to have the client part of the gRPC uh, service, uh, and okay. and yeah, I mean it's it yeah, the server is on on your code. So yeah. What I implemented yeah. is the server. That's better. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Can the device be configured to fail over on that itself, or will you, do you have to load balance it if you were going to do multiple? If you were going to do multiple, yeah, you have to, like, instead of put it to that direct location, put it to a uh, load balance or something like that. <laughs> and the other thing, I mean, it's like, of course, there's something <laughs> always. In case of UDP, the advantage of UDP is that you don't need the other side. You just send UDP package and it's always going to work. But with gRPC, the gRPC needs the server. And it won't try forever trying to reach the server. So if it passes a certain timeout, it's generous, but there is a timeout. You have to basically tell the switch, try again manually. That's unfortunate, but that's how it works. Did you look at running this in Karaf rather than just in That's the that's what I tried. Even like a simple hello world, nothing related with OpenMS. Just have the server running within Karaf is crazy because of the conflicts and the dependencies. I haven't figured out, and I'm not that good at Karaf, so probably I'm missing something that you guys might easily fix, but I haven't figured it out yet. I would love to. That's the only th that missing thing to have it run. Really good test case for for my stuff, where you're actually running out, stuff, hey, spinning up your stuff from your own. So that would be cool. Yeah. yeah.